Today I'm gonna to cook stew in this pot I made to demonstrate how these old style round bottom pots are great for outdoor cooking. But I'm not cooking just any stew. I'm cooking Wetherill stew, a recipe that has a long association with Southwestern archeology. This recipe was made famous by the godfather of Southwestern archeology, span Emil Howry. He used to make this to feed crews of archeologists and students in remote field schools and on field trips. In this way, over the course of many years, this recipe became famous in archeological circles, especially since the recipe wasn't written down and the only way you could sample it was by taking one of Doc Howry's field trips. The recipe was eventually written down by a couple of students who helped Howry to prepare the dish at different times. So today there exists two slightly different versions of the recipe, one written in 1967 and the other in 1974. The differences between the two recipes perhaps illustrate the evolution of the dish over time, or maybe it shows how Howry would mix it up based on what ingredients he had available to him. At any rate, I'll put links to both of the recipes down in the doobly-doo. The dish I'm making today is a bit of a combination of those two recipes based on my own preferences. And I'll put that recipe in the doobly-doo as well. Howry first started working in the field of archeology span around 1925. In 1930, he became the assistant director of the Gila Pueblo Archeological Foundation. There, he helped to define the Hohokam culture. In 1937, he became the head of the Department of Archeology span at the University of Arizona. And while there, he first identified the Mogollon culture. In the course of his career, he excavated some of the most important sites in the Southwest and helped to identify many of the prehistoric cultures of this region and their timelines. But apparently, besides being the preeminent Southwest scholar and having the most amazing hat ever, he was also a great cook, or at least as it relates to cooking in the field. Sometimes when cooking outdoors, it's easier to prepare your ingredients ahead of time at home and then bring your vegetables already chopped, your meat already chopped, etc. For this cook, I prepared all my ingredients at home, chopped up my potatoes and onions and whatnot, and brought it up here already ready. Also keep in mind that this is a partial recipe. Doc Howry's recipe was made to feed an army, and I'm only feeding, you know, myself and my wife. So I needed far less ingredients. I have like a third of a can of stewed tomatoes and a, a third of a can of lima beans and a third of a can of corn. So it would be really hard for me to use a part of a can and then get the rest of it home while keeping it fresh. So it was easier to bring it up here in a Ziploc bag. Also remember that Doc Howry used to cook this in a Dutch oven and I'm cooking it in an earthenware pot. So the recipe will vary a little bit based on how it's being prepared as well. The only real trick to preparing this stew is to cook the bacon first, then add the beef and allow it to brown. For this, I wanna be careful not to place the pot directly on the coals because too much direct heat with no water in the pot to absorb it could cause the pot to crack. So what I'm doing here is I've got the pot propped on its side above the coals for this part where I'm browning the meat. And then once I start adding the liquid ingredients and the vegetables, I will reposition the pot. Emil Howry didn't invent this recipe though. Remember, it's called Wetherill stew. Howry learned to make the stew from John Wetherill, an early rancher, trader, guide, and amateur archeologist. In 1879, John Wetherill's family took up ranching in Mancos, Colorado when he was 13 years old. About 10 years later, his older brother, Richard Wetherill, discovered the cliff dwellings at Mesa Verde. The Wetherill brothers began making money guiding people into these ruins and collecting and exhibiting artifacts from there. From this beginning, John went on to make a career of guiding explorers and scientists into remote natural wonders and ruins in the Southwest, guiding such notable men as Zane Gray and Teddy Roosevelt. He and his wife also ran trading posts on the Navajo Nation. Besides being one of the first white men to see the ruins at Mesa Verde, he guided expeditions into Keats Seal, Rainbow Bridge, and was the first overseer of Navajo National Monument. When he got older, he would spend the winters down south near Tucson starting in 1926. 
Once the meat is all cooked and browned, you can start adding the liquid, potatoes, and other fresh ingredients that need to cook down. At this point, I'm going to reposition my pot from the frying position on its side to the boiling position straight up. After a little while, I'll add the canned ingredients and the wine. When it's almost done, I will attempt dumplings, but I'm not sure how well that's going to work in this pot. I can't find any specific expeditions or excavations where Emil Howery and John Wetherill worked together. But nevertheless, their lives, their interests, and their travels overlapped a great deal. And somewhere along the way, Emil Howery learned a good field stew from John Wetherill. And we're fortunate to have this today because it wasn't written down as far as I can tell until 1967. And even then, it was just somebody who was working with Howery and taking good notes. It wasn't recorded by Howery directly. So the recipe for this stew nearly slipped away from us. Both recipes include dumplings on top of the stew. Unfortunately, this pot shape is not very conductive to dumplings. I'm gonna give it a try and see how it goes, but as far as I know, I'm the first person to try cooking Wetherill stew in an earthen pot. But keep in mind that both John Wetherill and Emil Howery were very familiar with clay pots. And this seems to me like a natural extension of this recipe. Okay, my alarm went off. That means that my dumplings are cooked and I'm ready to eat the stew. So I'm gonna get this bowl off the top, which is pretty hot. And then I can just serve myself some of this. What I didn't bring was a ladle so I can get some of that broth, unfortunately. I'm just gonna have to be content with the solids and have some of the broth when I get home. All right. Mm. That's pretty darn good. Of course, it's getting on towards two o'clock, so I've worked pretty hard out here making this stew and worked up an appetite. If you're interested in using earthenware for practical purposes like this, then you'll probably be interested in the video where I made this jar and talk about how earthenware jars like this are great for keeping water cool in the hot summer months. I'll put a link to that video right over here so you can check that out and learn about another use for earthenware pottery. Thanks for coming along with me today. I'll catch you next time.